At 10.40 a.m. on April 29, 1986, a farmer working in his field in rural Oklahoma noticed smoke coming from a nearby road and decided to investigate. When he arrived at the scene, he found a car had collided into the side of a bridge and had burst into flames. The heat from the fire was so intense the car had begun melting and had fused with the bridge's guardrail. Police attending the scene noticed something sinister in the front driver's seat of the car, a burning body, too late to be rescued by firefighters and paramedics. Accident investigators reported that the car was likely to have been travelling between 50 to 60 miles per hour, based on the skid marks leading up to the point of impact. The car belonged to a man named Pat Conway, and the body was soon identified as his wife of 33 years, Eileen. The couple lived with their children in Lawton, 15 miles from the crash site. Authorities believed that she died in a tragic accident, but Pat found convincing evidence that she was murdered. On the afternoon of Eileen's death, her husband Pat had returned home to find several unexplainable out-of-place things. The back screen door had been left open. Eileen's purse had been left at home, which also contained her driver's license and glasses, without which she would not normally drive. The iron had been left on. The garden hose was filling the pool with water. Most unexplainable of all was the bathtub had been filled and appeared as though someone was preparing to have a bath, yet the bath had not been used. Pat also discovered the phone had been left off the hook, leading him to believe someone had hurriedly tried to make a phone call, likely trying to call for help, but had been unsuccessful. Pat later told investigators Eileen had been travelling on a road that was unfamiliar to both of them. He went to the accident site the next day, meeting with Ray Anderson, the lead investigator. There they found Church Bulletin laying on the ground, approximately 200 feet from the bridge. Pat identified it as literature received from the church he and Eileen had regularly attended, and claimed he had last seen it on the car's dashboard. He told investigator Ray that he did not believe the leaflet had flown out of the car, as Eileen never drove with the windows open and always used the air conditioning. Soon after, Ray Anderson stated he believed that there was a second person in the car, someone who had jammed the accelerator and forced the car into drive, hoping for the vehicle to fall into the creek in an attempt to make it look like an accident. However, the car had reared off track and collided instead with the side of the bridge. The district attorney's office soon changed the cause of death from accident to unexplained. The DA commissioned the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation and the State Fire Marshal to investigate the incident as a possibility of arson. Sonny Sampson of the Fire Marshal's office was surprised at how the fire caused such great damage to the car's interior. He believed that the damage was similar to what would occur if gasoline was used to set a fire. He also noted that the gas cap was missing from the car. According to him, in most arson cases, the gas cap is removed to help increase the spread of the fire. Informal burn tests on dashboard and upholstery samples from a car similar to Eileen's suggest that the inside of her car may have been doused with gasoline. According to Samson, the type of damage to Eileen's car would not have been found if it were an accident. Authorities believe Eileen's death may be connected to a string of robberies in the neighbourhood where she and Pat resided. Investigators assumed the burglars entered the Conway home thinking no one was in and surprised Eileen, forcing her to flee her home in a panic after trying to call for help. Investigators also believed Eileen was pursued or abducted by the burglars who staged the accident in an attempt to mislead the police. According to some sources, not yet corroborated, jewellery and other valuables were missing from the home. Sadly, Pat Conway also died on 20th August 2013, after spending the best part of his life trying to piece together the events of that tragic day in April of 1986. The case remains unsolved.